This is my comparison between the JBL Eon 1, the Sub Zero, and the Bose L1 Compact. So, the JBL is the largest of the three units I'll be showing you today, and it weighs in at 19.5 kilograms. However, considering that it's got a 10 inch subwoofer, which is larger than the other two you'll see, and that its columns are stored inside the speaker, that's not bad. Here's the Sub Zero. This weighs in at 30.5 kilograms. And that's pretty good really because it's the only one that has a battery within it so that it can run on its own power and without mains. And the battery in it is significantly good. I'll talk about that later and it's very, very good. Um, the case is very unusual though. It's got two carry handles, but it doesn't have a sling. So you can't put it over your shoulder with ease. Um, this Bose that you'll now see, this case has got it right. This does have a sling and it's also got handles. So very helpful if you need to carry it about and you're holding other equipment. The cases on the Bose are significantly better build quality than the others and the Bose uh, one that goes over the actual unit has got a nice little carry uh, pocket in the back so you can put your wires in there which is brilliant. Okay, let's try and build these and see how we go. So the Bose case makes it a dream to be able to get out the two connecting columns. These just slide out easily and they rely on gravity plus a little bit of push to help them fit in. These are very, very easy to do, and the only or one of the three units that you can actually build with one hand if you really want to. As we go on to the Sub-Zero unit, the first problem is the case. It's so unusually built, it's quite loose inside as well, and the zips go all the way around, so everything inside can just fall out. It's a bit of a marathon, really. However, once it's out, you can put them on with relative ease. They go from forwards to backwards rather than up and down. It may be because all the other companies have painted the technology. Um, they're harder to slot together and you certainly need two hands because they have to click into place. Getting them out is often a problem because they get quite stuck. Now the JBL often gets stuck. However, a little bit of whiskey or once and lighter fluid, anything that doesn't affect electrics will help it be a lot smoother. And it's built with ease and certainly the fastest. Okay, so we're just gonna go handheld for a minute whilst I take you around the mixers. I'm not gonna tell you what everything does, but I will explain the difference is that I found in these um, just facts, not something that might be uh, subjective or open to opinion. So the JBL mixer isn't great. The reverb on it isn't great. You'd probably need to use a different mixer. Uh, it can take the two inputs for the XLR or the jack, which is good. The mic for it with the line in is okay. It's very quiet. Uh, with the input down, the mic is loud, but it doesn't feel like proper phantom power from a mixer. Uh, but it just about coped uh, one of the last weeks that I used it with someone doing a best man speech, which was slightly embarrassing because it should be plenty loud enough for that, seeing as I used it for doing a disco after and it was shaking the floor. So, next, um, by the way, when I used it for the disco, I used it through a Yamaha mixer. Okay, so, then you've got the inputs. These are nice. Um, obviously, you've got lots of options for your keyboard, and also you have your Bluetooth. The Bluetooth is great, and it works really far, which is fantastic. The downside of it is that the button is super flimsy. On both my JBLs, the button has multiple times got stuck underneath the casing, which is a nightmare. And finally, your monitor out is just ridiculous. So they've got the phono cables for monitor out. We all know it's a weak connection. It's ridiculous. They need an XLR on it. You've also got your stereo in, um, which I've used. I use it for an iPad. I like it because I can disconnect it from all the internet instead of my phone and not worry about Bluetooth going off. And I can run a set through that, which is quite nice. Uh, the master volume is okay. It goes kind of loud, very... Uh, you know, not compared to the Bose. Um, but when you put this thing through a mixer, it's a different kettle of fish and it is wonderful in all areas. I honestly can't think of any areas it isn't when you run it through a mixer. Okay, so that's that. And it uses the normal three prong uh, cable for its power. This is not wireless. You can get the battery operated new 
JBL Eon One Pro. But this is the Eon One, uh, and I use this because it's got a larger base bin. Uh, so obviously it's slightly better for if I DJ with it. Okay, moving on. This is my favorite mixer of the lot, and this is the reason I bought this Sub-Zero budget version. Okay, so let's just dive in immediately to this. So, it runs off the of batteries. It says online it will do about six hours. I tell you what, this, it's been phenomenal. I've done now 13 hours with it, and it's on, I think, it's on the second bar, or two bars gone, it's on the third bar down. That has been 13 hours worth of playing music through it with Bluetooth, throwing the piano through it. I mean, they are underselling themselves. Maybe the battery will go slightly quicker than some, but, you know, that is really something. And I can guarantee other people who've got this should agree with that. You know, and I've given it some hard use and never charged it since I bought it yet. Okay. And by the way, I have used these before, but this one is the first one I own. So this is only two weeks old. Okay, the mix on this is brilliant. So, so good. I'm not biased in any way. I'm just trying to give facts. You've got your optional here. You can even put it to a guitar if you're going to go acoustic um, or electroacoustic. Your mic, that gives a nice whack. Really good. And then you've got your channel three and four. So you've got your two inputs and two inputs again. So you can use key, two keyboards if you wish. Um, channel seven, eight has three options. It's got the phono cables for the in. It's got the stereo option and... It's also got the Bluetooth, which connects every time. That is so quick. The JBLs are a bit like, uh, am I connecting? This is brilliant, but you can't go nearly as far with it. I mean, uh, if we're talking meters, I'd had to guess 15 meters, 20 meters. The JBL, I've been across a hall and it hasn't disconnected across my garden. That's 90 foot, so definitely it can go over 90 foot, the JBL. But this doesn't go very far, the Bluetooth. But it's budget. You've also got the high z which is nice. Okay, the output. Yes, look at that. A proper XLR. So, um, I actually got this from... Not that I'm endorsing anyone. I got this from Gear for Music. And um, I got the battery-powered version. But they do an exact same model without battery. So I've realised I only wanted this for the mixer. Um, and so I don't have to use a separate mixer for certain things. The speaker's fine. You'll hear that later. Um, so you can actually buy a much a half the price powered version of this and plug it in. So you've then got two. Quite a good idea, I think. And then onto the Bose. Now we all know about Bose's quality and reputation. Something uh, you can't get away from on this is it's meant to be used with a tone match. They really try and push it to be used with a tone match. Um, so it's quite sparse. But it is what it is. I'm not going to say anything bad about that because it isn't meant to have a massive mixer in it. The microphone works amazingly. The volume on it, oh my god, you're like there and you're blowing people away. The volume outstrips the JBL like nothing. Um, not, but you know, let's get this straight, not through a mixer. When you're going through a mixer, the JBL wins against these every time with some ease, okay? But through their own devices, um, the volume controls here are better. The other thing is that if you compare the knobs here to what the Sub-Zero's got, these are tough. I mean, you can really push these. These are not going to move or break off. They are tough. These ones, these are really, really flimsy. I don't even want to do more than that. But <laughs> the difference of price is huge. Um, okay, so what have you got? Normal microphone input. You can use the... A guitar which has got the you know special M button which means it will judge what it will it will think it's doing it right and judge what you're using you've got the phono input if you want it and you've got the stereo input these when these came out there were not many they had Bluetooth uh, you can buy the original Bluetooth volume uh, input for it the one that costs like a hundred and something pounds or you could go on to Amazon and get one for about $4.99, which is what I did. Plug it in, and it's now a Bluetooth speaker. Ta-da! Uh, I may actually well do that with this. Uh, this connects beautifully, but you can't go very far. Um, but you can sort that out by spending $4.99 on Amazon or eBay, etc. And then you can go far. So, you know, it's not a really big deal. Okay, now look at this. This is not great, honestly. Another Phonos and a main out. So the Sub-Zero is a clear winner for putting to other devices because you've got the fantastic XLR output. Okay, and now the speakers themselves. 
I'll do the sound test right after and I'll make this quite quick. So you've got 10 inch, 8 inch and 8 inch. It makes a big difference. The bass on this is brilliant. The bass on the bows, I'm sure many people watching have heard them because they are so well known. Um, the bass isn't great and if you do turn it up you'll get a little bit of floor shake but you don't want to blow your speaker. Uh, this does the job amazingly and it will give you everything it's got. The Sub-Zero, interestingly, has brilliant bass. I'm still stunned how good the bass is. I like the bass almost just as much as the JBL and I feel really sad because it's, as you can tell from the look, it's an exact cop of the, copy of the Bose, but they've done the bass better. I say that with... You know, I don't really want to be saying that, but it's true, so I'm slightly shocked. The tweeters. Okay, so the JBL, not that you can see, I'm just touching the column, uh, only go that way. So they point straight out from the speaker, the top one goes up and the bottom one goes down at 45 degrees, and all of them face straight. So it does not cover side to side as well as the other two speakers. Okay, just so that people know, and that is a fact. The Bose covers area amazingly. It's got tiny little speakers, but they're all facing many different directions, a bit up, a bit sideways, a bit down. Um, they say that it will get almost 180 degrees, and I would agree with them, almost 180 degrees. They do a brilliant job. I still like the sound from the JBL more, but these cover beautifully. So I'm thinking for a speech, for some guitar and just singing. Oh yes, go for the bows. Okay, now, this one is interesting. The Sub-Zero, I like more than both of them. So, <laughs> you know, what do you do? It's got slightly larger speakers, so you get a lot more middle, which has always been the thing with the bows you get lovely treble, some unusual bass, and not much mid. Even when you're using a mixer, you can only get good mid from if you've got slightly larger speakers. Ta-da! So, this has brilliant coverage. I would say as good as the Bose. It's got a bit more mid as well. Now, the sound quality you'll hear later, but so far it keeps up well. Height-wise, they are all very, very similar. Putting them together and how flimsy they are. So, the JBL by far is the most flimsy. It is unbelievably wobbly. <laughs> it also has three height variations, low, middle and high. The Sub-Zero has only two positions. This top one, oh, don't be tricked, this is just plastic. So the top one, or the lower column. Um, to be honest, that's fine for my work. And here, the bows, you've got three positions. The top, the middle, and the very, very bottom. Because obviously the top unit can slot into the bottom there. And there we have it. There's our three speakers.
So, some final thoughts on these speakers. Um, well, for me, the Sub-Zero for, as a DJ, uh, wouldn't cut it because the bass has some internal vibration kind of thing going on. Um, so I couldn't really use that for a paid customer. Um, if that was fixed, perhaps it's just this unit. Um, the other ones that I've used, I've not pushed this much. These were really near the limit. Um, I don't know if it vibrates or not, but that would make it unusable for me in that kind of setting. It's the vibration, the buzzing of metal hitting something um, is loud enough that you can hear it over the bass that's being produced. So that's quite significant really. Um, so I wouldn't use that for a paid customer. The mid that you get from it, I really, really like. So everything going on in this area, and I did check where the buzz was coming from. Um, I would say yes. Um, I like the top of it plenty enough. If it's slightly quieter venue, uh, perhaps if there's two and you can turn each of them down a bit, maybe the buzz would relieve. Um, I will eventually compare to see if this one has a battery in it, to see if the units are half the price without a battery buzz. It may be, because it's more packed in here, that it's the battery vibrating when it gets to a certain level that they've, they've not sorted out in their testing yet. Okay, so the JBL is the one I would DJ with. Absolutely. As you know, I do many different kinds of work. So there are some I would prefer the Sub-Zero for if I'm playing piano and that, but we'll leave that aside for another video. So for DJing, um, it would have to be the JBL. There's, there's really no comparison. I, I don't think anyone would disagree with any of these units, even if they're a real bone lover. For DJing, the 10-inch the bass bin, um, I pushed it all the way. I even pushed it to the orange limit of the JBL, which I've never seen it go to before. Um, it just it doesn't matter, it's a pure bass, lovely sound. The mid for me is a little bit high, I'd like, sorry, the, the treble for me, um, the tweeter for me, is a little bit small, so it sounds quite high, but the mid that you can get from pushing it a bit more up on the mixer is okay. Um, I'd love there just to be a tiny bit bigger, so you can really get those mid range in, um, but this would have to be a clear winner of these type of units. Um, the Bose for me, I really like. It doesn't have any problem with its clarity, of course. Um, it gets very piercing at the top end. So if I was dancing on a dance floor and um, that was near me, even if I take all the treble off, it's a really piercing unit. Um, so probably I would say better for speech and uh, for perhaps some larger rooms where you have a guitar and the vocals so that you know you can really push that um, distance. Uh, the bass never really cut it. This was vibrating, but the bows on the bass was still wasn't as good. Um, there's no extra bass you can give the unit, so it never sounds like a subwoofer. It just it sounds a bit like a keyboard speaker. Um, yeah, it's, it's lovely, of course, but probably not suited to DJing. But then bows make lots of other more expensive systems. That would be, of course. Um, so for me, from a DJ point of view, it would be the JBL Eon 1. And I certainly wouldn't pick the Pro over this either, I have used the Pro, um, but it's the big bass bin. The, the point is to save people time and effort and carrying extra equipment, buying something different. Um, I did actually DJ with this one. DJ is just with one unit and bought a bass bin. Uh, I work as a bassist, I had a Mark bass, very, very lovely. Um, but still, there, there wasn't enough mid to kind of fill the atmosphere. And that's my views on it. Uh, thank you very much for watching.